Hello everyone. Welcome to the new session on the classification of phylum Echinodermata. Uh, here we will be discussing on class Crinoidea. The Crinoidea, the term has come from Crinon and Oidus, which means lily and in the form, that is in the form of lily. And that is why they are commonly referred as the sea lilies. And the Crinoidea comprises both extinct as well as extant uh, echinoderms. And they are popularly known as sea lilies and sea feathers or feather stars. Now, crinoids include about uh, around 650 to 700 species of sea lilies and feather stars. And crinoids were once far more numerous than they are now. They differ from um, all other echinoderms in being attached to a substratum during a substantial period of their life. Okay. Uh, sea lilies, if you see the sea lilies and uh, sea feathers are the ones which belong to the crinoidea. Sea lilies are attached permanently to their substrate by a stalk. You can see here, okay, uh, by a stalk. And uh, the attached end of the stalk bears a flattened disc or root like extensions that are fixed to the substrate. While the unattached end of the sea lily, it is known as a crown. Okay, it is, uh, that part is known as a crown. Uh, the aboral end, that is the, <clears throat> sorry, the aboral end of the crown, it uh, attaches to the stalk and is su supported by a set of ossicles, which are known as calyx. So here you can see the calyx over here. Okay, so this calyx actually supports the aboral end and this aboral end attaches to the stalk. Fine, so body is stalked or stalkless. It is stalked in the case of sea lilies and it is stalkless in the case of the uh, feather stars. Okay, and they are pentamerous in the sense they have uh, five arms attached at the calyx. Over here, you can see five arms are attached to the calyx, and uh, these uh, arms, each of the arm, they are branched and it is supported by ossicles again. And these uh, uh, bear smaller branches and they are known as pinules. Okay, so each of the arm which arise from the calyx, they are branched. And these branches, they contain, they uh, bear uh, what you call smaller branches, which are referred as the pinules. Okay. Now, these, uh, because of these uh, uh, branching and because of the presence of pinules, they appear feather-like. Okay. And that is why they have a common name like sea feathers or sea lilies. Okay. Now, the uh, tube feet present on the arms, they are in double row along each of the arm present. You can see here, uh, the cup is uh, referred as the calyx or the disc and the cover, the pyramidal cover, it is known as the tegmen. Okay, so uh, the mouth and anus are located on the upper side, that is on the oral side. And the uh, Arms are long, movable, branched or unbranched with or without alternating bilateral processes called pinules. So pinules and the branching, it is very obvious in sea lilies. And uh, the ambulacral grooves are open. So here you can see this is act, this uh, figure, it shows a typical crinoid uh, structure. Okay, So here you can see the um, ambulacral grooves over here. And this is the interambulacral area. And here we have the mouth and the anus. Mouth and the anus are on the same side, on the oral side or the upper side. And uh, the ambulacral grooves are open and they are ciliated. And they extend up to the tip of the arm and the pinules you can see these are the pinules okay so it extends till the tip of the arms and the pinules and these ambulacral grooves extend still the mouth madriporite spines pedicillaria all these structures are absent tube feet are present as already mentioned the tube feet in the case of sea lilies they are in double row along each of the arm okay but they have no suckers now the uh, so this is about the uh, basic features of crinoidea. Uh, now, during metamorphosis, we can see, uh, sorry, vertical feather stars we have been mentioned, I'm sorry. So, feather stars or the sea feathers, they're similar to sea lilies, uh, uh, except that the feather stars lack a stalk. They don't have a uh, stalk which actually connects the sea lily with the substratum. Such a kind of a stalk is absent in the case of sea feathers. Okay. And they are swimming and crawling animals. The aboral end, that is the uh, side uh, 
opposite to the uh, one having the mouth okay the aboral end of the crown it bears a ring of root like cirri okay this is where we can find over here okay they have a root like uh, um, ring of root like cirri okay and this help in clinging on to or attaching on to a, a substratum when it is resting okay so this you can see over here this is these are the cirri and these are the arms and its branches and the pinules okay you can see here these arms pinules the arms being provided with the ossicles then uh, each arm do have open um, what you call ambulacral groove the mouth and the anus on the same side the oral surface the on of the central disc okay this is the central disc right so this is about the uh, what you call general things about the what you call crinoids okay uh, so i'll just uh, repeat the whole thing that is the body it is composed of the main body part it is a body disc or uh, what we call as the uh, calyx it is covered with the uh, leathery skin it is known as a tegment over here you can will find the word tegment and this contains calcareous plates the epidermis it is poorly developed then uh, usually five flexible arms they uh, emerge out from the calyx and these each of the arm branch to form many more arms and each of the uh, branches of the arm it is provided with many lateral pinnules which are arranged like uh, barbs on a feather okay you may have seen the feathers uh, the uh, lateral branching of the feather that is known as a barb so just like the barbs on the feather we can find the pinnules on the branches of the arm okay calyx and the arms together it forms what is referred as a crown now the sessile or the attached forms usually have a long jointed stalk attached to the aboral surface of the aboral side of the uh, body okay so this is the aboral side okay the uh, other side is the oral side and this is how the oral side will look like okay now uh, the so already mentioned that is the sessile or the uh, attached stalked forms they have a long jointed stalk which is attached to the aboral side of the body this stalk it is composed of plates and appears jointed over here you will just one minute okay you can see it seems to be jointed uh, uh, um, like a, it seems to be like a uh, jointed structure okay and these may bear cirri you can see over here the madreporites um, uh, what you call spines pedicellariae they are all absent their upper or the oral surface bears a mouth you can see over here uh, which opens into short esophagus internally and from which the long intestine with diverticula proceeds aborally for a short distance and then makes a complete turn to the anus and uh, uh, the anus opens on the oral side itself okay now the ambulacral grooves over here these are open they are ciliated and serve to ca carry food to their mouth okay so this is where the ambulacral grooves uh, readily uh, function to uh, like uh, help in uh, feeding okay now the simple tube feed the tube feed uh, found on either surface it, the simple tube feed here you can see because of the ciliated uh, structures ciliary structures inside it creates a water current and this water current it will bring um, good amount of uh, what you call uh, food and this is how you can carry the, uh, the blue markings you can see over here this is how the direction of the water as well as the food is uh, Taking place. Okay, now so as already mentioned, the tube feed the, it is simple without suckers, and uh, uh, it, it lines the ambulacral grooves on either side, and uh, it also extends into the pinnules. Right now, this uh, with the aid of the tube feed and the mucus strands, the crinoids collect small organisms from the surrounding waters. Okay, water vascular system. It is very simple and shows the uh, basic echino echinoderm plan. Uh, and it uh, you can see here the function is mainly uh, in like um, food collection okay transport of food right um, so we can see here uh, that is the water vascular system uh, it is mainly for the food collection and there is no madreporite as already mentioned uh, to allow the exchange of fluid with the surrounding environment nervous system it is very simple and uh, sexes they are separate and uh, we can see that the um, like uh, there is a larval stage the development is indirect and hence there is a larval stage it is known as a dol dolial area the example we have already referred it is a antidon okay fine thank you